The Boston Celtics are one of the most historical, accomplished, and entertaining franchises in league history, but nothing compares to the ultimate brotherhood, camaraderie, drama, and ultimate downfall of the original Big Three of the Boston Celtics. The Celtics were successful as one of the early teams in the NBA, winning numerous titles through the 1960s and 80s. However, in the 90s and early 2000s, the team started struggling. The Celtics have been accused of not being creative enough with the salary cap, of not going after free agents, and not making any bold trade attempts with the players they have. But the Celtics desperately need some fresh talent to rebuild. However, things started to change when the team selected Paul Pierce 10th overall in 1998. With the 10th pick in the 1998 NBA Draft, the Boston Celtics select Paul Pierce from the University of Kansas. Pierce was the player they wanted to build around, yet it took several years and seasons for things to start falling into place. Things first started off well in 2006 when the Phoenix Suns selected Rajon Rondo for the Celtics in a draft day trade, sending the young Kentucky point guard to Boston to start his career. Then in 2007, the following offseason, the Celtics made big moves to create the first team of its kind, the Big Three, filled with their three superstars that had proven themselves elsewhere in the league, joining up to make a serious championship push. On June 28, 2007, Ray Allen was traded from the Seattle Supersonics to the Celtics, and on July 31st of the same year, Kevin Garnett, easily one of the best basketball players on the planet, was traded to the Celtics for draft picks, players, and cash considerations. It was an expensive price to pay, but finally the Celtics had all the right pieces to make a push. Ultimately in their first season playing together, the Celtics were a perfect fit and produced an epic championship run, one that included taking down of Lakers legend Kobe Bryant and the Lakers in six games in the NBA Finals, capping off their historic season with a decisive championship win. After their impressive victory in 2008, it seemed like the Celtics were on their way to scooping up titles left and right as they looked to create another dynasty that they were so well known for. Kevin Garnett was the best defensive big man in the league, Ray Allen was a scoring machine and three-point sniper, Paul Pierce was a walking bucket, and even Rajon Rondo was there to simply keep the offense flowing smoothly. It was the quintessential notion, teams win championships. And it just so happens the Celtics had bought themselves the best one, or so they thought. The next few years, however, produced less than desirable results for the championship or bust team. In 2009, the defending champion Celtics were defeated in the Eastern Semifinals by an Orlando Magic team starring Dwight Howard and Jameer Nelson, in which the Magic had a Cinderella run to the finals, only to lose to Kobe and the Lakers. But the Celtics' story wasn't written yet. In 2010, the Celtics reclaimed the East after winning 50 games in a crowded Eastern Conference. However, like the Magic, they fell in the finals in the 2008 rematch where Kobe and the crew got the best of them. Were the Lakers simply unbeatable? Still, even with these disappointments and unanswered questions, and their stars not getting any younger, they gave fans every reason to hope for another championship parade in Boston. Then this happened. Not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, not seven. There's a new big three in town, especially in the East, that the Boston Celtics were supposed to dominate for years to come. And despite their own issues against the Mavs in 2011, the Heat were faster, stronger, and most importantly, younger. Predictably, the Celtics were still good enough for a deep playoff run that they proved capable of in the seasons prior, but once again they couldn't get it done, a theme they are used to, as they dropped the Eastern Conference Finals in 2011 to the Miami Heat and their new Big Three. Oh, Whoa. It was now clear, obvious to even the most casual basketball fans, that the aging Celtics were running out of time to capture another title. The Celtics paid big money and assets for a guaranteed finals contender. And although they won in 2008, they simply weren't good enough to win the big series when they mattered the most. Maybe that's what spurred management to make tough decisions. But after dealing away several role players for the team, 
the potential to keep the big three around for one more season and title run seemed like a possibility. This all changed, however, when Ray Allen, the career three-point field goal made leader, decided to take his talents to South Beach and join none other than the Celtics arch rival, LeBron James and the Miami Heat. Allen's move infuriated the Celtics, who felt betrayed and in some ways blindsided. Rumors quickly spread that Allen wasn't happy with the bench role on the Celtics, or that he wasn't being paid enough to stay in a town that no longer wanted him. Some even went as far to say that he demanded more touches in Boston's offense, something that they simply wouldn't commit to. And you know what? Maybe it was true. These all seemed to be valid points that Ray Allen had to say. Or maybe he saw the writing on the wall. He knew the greatest player in the world paired with Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh in Miami was simply too powerful to take on with his overlooked and older stars in Boston. Either way, he jumped ship, opting to join the team that he could not beat. The move was genuinely well received by fans, except for, well, Celtics fans. After all, Allen wanted to continue playing on the biggest stage, and he had every right to do so via free agency. He deemed himself a valuable three-point shooting asset, something that every team, including the Miami Heat, needed. Plus, in his own mind, he owed nothing to the Celtics or his former teammates. It was his decision to make. While things got better and better in Miami for Allen, Catches, puts up the three, won't go, rebound, box, back out to Allen, his three-pointer, bang, tie game with five seconds remaining. Things took a turn for the worse in Boston. They found themselves struggling to contend in the East and eventually traded away the remnants of their once promising and coveted Big Three in 2014, all but closing the short and rather disappointing chapter in their title contention. They would all go on to play for multiple seasons with other franchises, Garnett going back to where it all started in Minnesota, and Pierce making several stops, but his most notable with his former Celtics coach, Doc Rippers, who is now head coach of the Clippers. Allen, meanwhile, retired on the Miami Heat, adding another ring to his resume, seemingly content his playing days were over. And it was all history. After their careers, Kevin Garnett started starring in movies, Paul Pierce continued his legacy with a new TV job, and Allen wrote a successful book about his illustrious career. Things were all good for the fragmented Big Three. Well, until it was time to celebrate Paul Pierce's jersey retirement. Right before the reunion, all the members of the Big Three had already feuded on national TV, adding insult to relationships that were already on their last legs. And then I text KG, and I said, listen, they're not gonna pay me. He goes, nah, they're gonna pay you, they're gonna take care of you, it's gonna be all right, you're part of the family. I was like, it's not looking like that. And then the As you're sitting back watching all this, what are you thinking? Um, I thought about disloyalty. Right. And it was just like, damn, they just beat us and then you're gonna go over there. Like, if you're not want to play with us no more, at least let us know something. Oh, just I'm gonna just say this, like, look, ahead, bro. I was initially hurt by the whole way everything went down. Like, I don't have no beef with right. none of my teammates or nothing. I was just hurt on how it went down. It got so bad that Ray Allen didn't even show up for the Jersey retirement, instead opting to play golf with George Lopez. Unfortunately, that's the legacy of the big three and the 2008 Boston Celtics. They were a great team, but not one that could rally around each other whenever the going got tough. Instead of lifting up each other to achieve their main goal of winning multiple O'Brien championship trophies, they fought, insulted, and sparred their way to the crash of the dynasty that never was. What do you guys think? Was Ray Allen wrong for leaving? Or did his former teammates take it a bit too personal? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe to Famous Feuds.